All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mitchell Blake with Fish IBX. We haven't been on the water filming in a bit, but uh, been wide open running charter. So anyways, today we're going to take a little time out. We're going to do an episode. Um, we're on the Roanoke River, uh, lower Roanoke River to be exact, and we're just going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to try to hit some rock. Might try to hit some bass. Might try to hit some blue cats. Um, might try to hit some white perch. Who knows what this is going to turn into. Um, we got in the morning, uh, kind of hitting the water mid-morning. And we're just going to, we're going to go fishing. We're just going to dissect it, show you what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, why we're going to do it. And uh, we're on my first spot here, just a little backwater eddy, and we're going to see if something, something's home. Uh, I expect maybe uh, my goal off this spot is a rockfish or two, uh, striped bass, and then we might go throw some top water. Who knows what we're going to do? Anyways, let's get started. Stay tuned. I think you're going to like this episode. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, a uh, lot of stuff coming your way. All right, gang, I grabbed a couple rods through here beside me. Um, got a top water, got a swim bait, got a hair jig. That covers all three water columns. And we're just going to hit some spots and see what happens. See if we can get something. See if we can get something happening. He didn't eat it on that. He don't want it right there. All right, I'm going to pick this other corner right here off. Come by that corner right there. Oh, dang, took it right away from him. He wasn't far from that corner post. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Try that one more time. Change my angle there just a little bit. Up, oh, on and off. On and off. He smacked it, though. Give me that shot one more time, baby. Rip my skirt now. Grab it by the tail. All right, that tells me two. That tells me a couple different things. I saw those shad flipping. We got a bite on the back corner on the top water bait. That tells me there's some fish on that angle. Got bumped on that front, but he grabbed it by the tail. It tells me there might be some small fish up there, maybe some perch. All right, I'm gonna come in a little closer this time. My angle just got bumped. There's the fish. Get off the log, baby. On the board, off the board. What we got here? Hadn't jumped yet. Largemouth bass. Whoop. Hey, buddy. Little chub. He won't make a payday in a tournament. Let's see how long he is. What is he, 10, 12 inches? 13 inches. Little fat guy. See you, baby. Go back. Largemouth bass. Come back down that same angle. There's a bite. A little bit different. Let's see what we got here. Largemouth oh. bass spit it. Almost hit the cameraman in the face. <laughs> I hope y'all got, I hope y'all heard the camera, man. That was coming right for his screen. It was not looking good for the camera. Glad we saved that. That was a disaster getting her to unfold. It was almost on my chest, so I was like, ah! Yeah. Cameraman almost took it to the chest. All right. They want largemouth bass number two just to got off. Let's see what else is up there. A poor swim bait is struggling. Missed him. He smacked the mud out of it. I missed him, no one. He caught me off guard. Two strikes on that cast. 
my jig steel. It's all right, I believe. I don't know. I like it. I like it to be running straight and true, but I want to bite. They want to bite. Hmm. All right, that's two casts in four. That's four bites on two casts right there. That's telling me in my mind that there's something small up there. I got another rod rigged up, um, ready to rock and roll, because like I say, today's going to be a, a versatile day. All right, gang, we're on to our next little spot here. I want, it's, it's late in the morning, but I'm still, I'm going to throw a little bit of top water. I mean, water's cool, it's springtime. And what I got is a small profile, just knocking bait, top water. Walk the dog is what they, what you'll hear it referred to as. And I'm just going to throw it up in the edge of these woods and walk it out, see if we can get a bite for you guys. And look, when you're walking the dog, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Everybody's got their own technique. Some people can't do it at all. It takes a little bit of coordination. Um, but there's different patterns to it. You can do a wide, what I call a wide wobble or a wide walk. You can do a real sharp, aggressive uh, twitch on it. And usually what I will do in a day's time is I'll, I'll vary it a little bit, see what gets attention, if it gets any attention at all. And then you can kind of home in, but you need to pay attention at what's going on with it, how you're working the bait and what produces the strike so you can, so you can uh, maximize your time. And kind of what I'll do is I'll pay attention to what Mother Nature's doing. If the birds are real active, if the fish are real active, I'll probably speed it up some. If everything's being sluggish, uh, slow, not being real aggressive, then I'll typically slow it down. And I'll do this just by paying attention, like I say, to the birds, to the fish. If you see fish running, you see a lot of fish movement. Sometimes the big profile catches more fish. Uh, I, I keep them all in my box and readily available with sharp hooks so my philosophy behind this is i'm kind of matching the size of the bait right now the, the shad and stuff are still small it's early spring so i'm just throwing a small bait small, small profile in hopes that i can pick up a variety of fish some of your smaller fish may shy away from the bigger baits See you, buddy. Jump on my hook. There's a strike. Fouled, fouled it up a little bit. Boom. There's a little strike. Just kept working that. He came right back up and got it. And that, my friends, is another largemouth bass. Come here, buddy. Was your brother down there trying to eat with you? Or did you come back and get it again? Small guy. Whoop, whoop. They say you hold him out to the camera, he looks bigger. We need a little fish extender on him. Anyways, buddy, back in the drink. See ya. Pop water action. Small fish, big fish. That kind of goes back to my philosophy I was talking about, the reason why I particularly tied on this smaller profile is to be able to catch you know a smaller fish big fish i have no problem eating it but a uh a great big top water bait uh sometimes those small fish are shy off of it there's a strike i'm gonna keep on working it come back and eat it baby all right don't want another strike swing and a miss Three fish gives you a pattern. Three fish gives you a pattern, and uh, that was my third strike here in about 50 yards. So one fish, two strikes, other. So I want to keep working it just the way I'm working it. I'm satisfied that something will eat that. And that's a medium. I'm doing this as a as a medium retrieve, so I'd stick with that. 
All right, gang, I'm gonna make a couple more casts here on the top water. Um, as you can see, the creek's getting kind of kind of gunky. Um, but we're gonna make a few more shots. See if we can get another big bite on top water. It's just where uh, that sheen that you see on the top right there is where that swamp, there's all kinds of gases in the swamp. There's all kinds of sludge piling. Um, there's a good bite. Get out of here. Get out of here. Spit it out. There's a good bite. That was a good bite. What was that? Was that angler error? Was that fish angler? I have no idea. What was that? Was that me? Did I horse him too hard? What do you think, folks? <laughs> Anyways, he was on and off. That's going to get one more cast. Another fish just moved up there. So, that was a good fish, too. The big one always gets away is what we're going to write that off as. So, anyways, this gunk on the water, man, is just that. It's gunk. Pollen. It's all the stuff that's been in the swamp all year. Because, like I say, the water, man, was the water was about three foot higher a couple weeks ago. And then we had a hail storm, and they started dropping the water. That's why you see all these leaves, these ground up leaves. And plus, when these Tupelo gums start budding out, those caterpillars get on it by the thousands and munch, 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 and fall down in the water. All right, gang, we're going to close this one out. Hope you guys got to see a few good bites. We got to see a few little short bass, a um, couple of nice busts on the water. But uh, anyways, you guys hit the water. Stay safe. Hope you pick something up. If you want a trip, come see us. We'd love to have you. And uh, check out. Stay tuned for the next episode. Fishibx.com.